Ladies and gentlemen, it's 10 o'clock, so good morning to all of you. Let me introduce myself. My name is Radim Saibot and I'm the spokesperson of Masaryk University. And it's a great honor for me to welcome you here at Masaryk University for a press conference with Professor Andrei Zubov. Before we start the press conference, uh, I would like to provide some technical information. As we announced, today's press conference will be held entirely in English without the translation services. Press conference will last at least 45 minutes and will be consist of two parts. In the first one, we all give our guests the chance to share their impressions and feelings about Professor Zubov's arrival at Masaryk University. And in the second part, all of them will be able and ready to answer your questions. But one important information needs to be said right now. You know what's going on in the current world. So please don't ask questions that could jeopardize the professor's safety. For example, where he lives, etc. In these cases, we would like to reserve the right not to answer these type of questions. I believe that's understandable point of view. You are a journalist. You see best what is happening in the world in these times of war. And Professor Zubov's safety is our highest and top priority. So thank you for your understanding, if possible. And now, telephone is ringing. Okay. And if we can continue, so now let's introduce all the guests at our press conference today. In the middle, in the role, of the main host, there is the rector of Masaryk University, Martin Baresh, who expressed his great support for the idea of Professor Zubov's arrival. Dear Mr. Rector, good morning, welcome, and please use the microphone. Thank you. To the right good of morning. our rector is sitting the Minister for European Affairs of the Czech Republic and the Rector Emeritus of Masaryk University, Mr. Mikuláš Beck. Good morning to you too. Good morning. And please use the microphone if possible. And on the left hand of our rector is Professor Andrei Zubov, one of the greatest experts on Russian history and above all a person who is not afraid to tell the truth. Dear Professor, it's a great honor for us to have you here. So please accept my warm welcome. When the war in Ukraine began, our Masaryk University was one of the first institutions in the Czech Republic to express support for the attacked country, to offer aid to the people of Ukraine and to cancel cooperation with Russian institutions. Now the university has welcomed the well-known Russian historian, Professor Andrei Zubov. Why? And what does the university want to express with this step? This is my first question for the rector of Masaryk University, Martin Baresh. Thank you. Good morning. It's a great pleasure to have you here, all of you, at the uh, Masaryk University. And especially I would like to express my many thanks to Professor Zubov that he accept, accepted our invitation and uh, he will spend some, I hope, very nice and uh, lively time with, not only with us, but especially with our students. And I'm also very personally glad that my long-term friend, uh, Mikuláš Beck, a Minister for um, European Affairs and, and uh, rector, uh, former rector of, of Masaryk University could be with us too because it also is the not only personal, but also, I would say, very significant expression how deeply we are um, involved in these um, uh, weeks, month, uh, in the, you know, when the Russian aggression uh, against free uh, state of Ukraine uh, is uh, now going on. And actually for Masaryk University, it's uh, somehow the prolongation or refreshment 
what had happened uh, almost or 100 years ago when Tomasz Garik Masaryk addressed the Russian uh, aid uh, operation uh, in early 20s of the 20th century and uh, our country, the Czechoslovakia, accepted, <coughs> excuse me, had accepted uh, significant numbers of, uh, of refugees from former Soviet, uh, Soviet uh, Union, not only to help uh, save their lives, but also to help save the culture and uh, research or science for, uh, for, uh, for Russia. And this is very small, I would say small, but I hope very important uh, step what we are doing now at, uh, at the Masaryk University. And uh, I would like to also express that the Masaryk University is trying to also has the impact into the society with this, with this help. Because we had uh, not only quit it almost immediately uh, on the 26th of February, the cooperation with Russian institutions, which are governmental or state uh, institution, and we cannot cooperate with the, with the regime, uh, which is so aggressive. But also we had, uh, uh, we have so far a couple of hundreds new Ukrainian students. We had provided the, the room and the uh, conditions to welcome uh, here, um, I think, almost 70 to 90 Ukrainian researchers, mostly, uh, mostly uh, in researchers and acad academicians. Uh, our volunteering center, Muni Helps, is very active in the uh, in the help and uh, to Ukrainian students. And the case or the um, example of Professor Zubov stay in Brno also means that we are against the um, or we are providing the individual help to uh, people who are very, uh, very important and who are uh, long-term critics uh, of that brutal Putin regimes, uh, regime, uh, Putin's regime. So thank you again, and I hope that we will have the other uh, opportunities to discuss this very important, and I would say also very personal, um, personal, Mm, also the press conference or the feelings of the press conference and I'm very, very glad that we have such a great personality like Andrei Zubov at our Masaryk University. Thank you. Thank you for your first speech, Mr. Rector. The relationship between Masaryk University and Professor Andrei Zubov was born many years ago. Professor Zubov publicly denounced the Russian annexation of Crimea, after which he lost his job and prevented from lecturing of Russian universities until today. And he received an offer from the former rector of Masaryk University, Mikuláš Beck, to work here in Brno. And Mikuláš Beck, now Minister for European Affairs of the Czech Republic, is with us today. So, dear Minister, do you perceive the relationship between Masaryk University and Andrei Zubov? And what can you say about his contribution to Czech society and perhaps also to European affairs, maybe? Uh, thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Barish for inviting me to this press conference. I'm almost sentimental being in this room after quite a long time, you know. That's the room in which the Senate of the Masaryk University normally meets. Uh, I will be very brief, you know. I, I'm really happy that, that, that Professor Zubov and his family arrived safely to Brno a few weeks ago. It was quite an adventurous journey, I would say, from Moscow to Finland and then from Finland to Brno. I'm really happy it was a success. And it seems to me it's quite important event for me to generalize on because, you know, most or many European countries have introduced more strict visa policy on, on, on Russian citizens recently. But 
simultaneously we need to find ways how to help our friends in Russia, uh, representatives of the democratic opposition in Russia. So we have to balance the strict measures with ways which would allow normal humanitarian behavior of the governments. So I'm really happy that it has been a success. And I'm looking forward to uh, Professor Zubov's lectures, even if I will watch them just on the internet, because on Wednesday we normally have government meetings. Uh, I think Professor Zubov is a sort of symbol of, of Russian opposition in, 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 in the Czech Republic. And I don't need to uh, to expand on that because his books, his lectures, his public interviews for media are really famous. And for us, it's an honor as a university to have him here and to give this signal to uh, the European audience that Russia has a democratic future and a democratic opposition at present. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Minister. And now, dear Professor Zubov, it's time for your first speech. So please tell me or tell us, of course, what does the opportunity to be in Brno mean to you? And how did you enjoy your first real lecture in front of first real students after long, maybe eight years? <coughs> Okay. Yeah, you can speak. <laughs> yes. Uh, first of all, I want to express my gratitude uh, to Mr. to Rector, to uh, Martin Balash, and to the Minister uh, Mikolas Beck, who both of them made a lot of efforts uh, to help me to arrive now to Czech Republic, to European Union, um, and uh, even more efforts to give me a possibility to be here, not as a refugee, but as a visiting professor of well-known all over the Europe, Masaryk University. Um, the theme of my lectures, which I was asked to deliver here, is uh, history, uh, philosophy of Russian history. And the problem, uh, which is of great interest now for many scholars and public all over the world, is this uh, totalitarian despotism, which now we see again in Russia after the terrible 70 years of communism. Um, uh, is this totalitarian despotism, is uh, some inner sense of Russian people, some genotype of Russia, or maybe it's a um, result of some wrong uh, steps of former Russian uh, governments and Russian people. And I... Um, it will be too much for me to say that I know the absolute answer to this question, but I will try to find this answer uh, with the help of my colleagues here in Brno, with the help of the students um, in our lectures and our discussions. And, uh, of course, as uh, Minister Beck told you, my way from Russia was a little bit adventurous. It's even can't be imaginable that in the 21st century to go to Czech University is necessary not to took a plane in Moscow in uh, the, in Sheremetyevo and in two hours be in Brno or Prague, but it's necessary to go um, uh, to drive. Uh, to Karelian border of Russia, then with much difficulties to cross this border, then go uh, through the half of Europe to reach Brno by car. Maybe if it's not car by diligence, it looks like in 18th century. Uh, so I was uh, in, in some way, I, w I was returned to the reality of 18th or 19th century. And not only, not only in this way of movement 
uh, and less in the way of movement than in the uh, form of politics. Here in Europe, we see today's modern understanding of politics as a result of great uh, positive intention to each personality. In Russia, we return to 19th year, uh, century collective politics, nationalism, racism, uh, totalitarian state, autocracy, um, absolutism. All these terms, which were only the part of history, turned to be a reality of the present in today's Russia. It's awful, of course. And that's why. Um, it was necessary for me to leave Russia for many months, even after this uh, involvement of aggra Russian aggression against Ukraine, I tried to be in Russia. I was sure and I continue to be sure that for a Russian scholar, for a Russian politician, it's necessary to be in the country, even if it's rather dangerous for him. But uh, after the mobilization of Russian, uh, Russian uh, society on the um, 21st of September, and uh, the change even of phraseology of Russian propaganda, it was absolutely clear to me that I have, will have only two possibilities in Russia, or to be silent, or to be in prison. There is no third way in Russia. And since it was impossible for me to be silent, my obligation is to explain and not only to survive. I, it was clear to me that the only possibility for me is prison and silence and prison. That's why I decided to accept this uh, cordial invitation of Masaryk University to go here and to be free as a person, as a citizen of Russia, and always as a scholar, as a professor in the contact with my students. So my great thanks to you, dear colleagues, to you, dear Rector Barish, to you, dear Minister Mikolaj Beck, uh, for the support, for the possibility which you gave me to be here and to feel myself free and again with my destiny with me. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for your initial responses. And now, dear journalist, it's time for you and for your questions. So if you have any question, don't hesitate, please, and ask of any of our guests. But before your question, please take the microphone for two ladies standing at the walls. And before your question, please introduce yourself and ask your question. And of course, also who among our guests you are asking. Thank you. So first, Thank you very much. I'm Flemer, Agence France Press. Uh, Professor Zubov, um, I would like to ask you to please clarify one thing for me. Uh, you were here earlier this year in the Czech Republic and you went back home and uh, now you're here for uh, obviously a longer stay. Uh, was it just that you changed your mind or did the circumstances change externally uh, for you to take this de decision? Thank you. That's a good question. Yes, I really was in July in Europe and in Czech Republic also. Uh, and uh, at that time, I decided only to see, uh, to meet my friends, to look for situation, uh, political situation, and uh, with no hesitation, I returned to Russia. Uh, I hoped that the um, uh, changes in the relations between Russia and Ukraine, Russia and, the, and Europe, uh, will be in the end of the summer or in September. Uh, and the changes occurred, but not in the direction I wanted. The, um, the situation turned to be much more terrible, um, much more urgent uh, than it was even during the summer. And the uh, main uh, sign of this urgency is the mobilization of Russia in Russia. And uh, now 
It's really, um, now uh, at that time, in the middle of September, I um, step by step understood that it's necessary to leave country. It's very unpleasant for me. I didn't want to leave Russia, as I have already told, but what to do? I prefer to leave Russia, but to uh, be a person who can express my ideas freely, than to continue to be in Russia without this human, natural for human being possibility. Thank you. Does anyone have any question? Lady in white. <laughs> Uh, thank you. My name is Veronika Tupa. I'm from the Czech television here. Uh, Professor Zubov, my question is regarding um, uh, you teaching again. After your denouncement of the Russian uh, annexation of Crimea, you lost your job, weren't able to uh, hold held lectures for a long time. So how did it feel uh, to be silenced like this by your government? And then Maybe how does it feel to be able to speak again in front of hundreds of students freely without any fear of um, punishment? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a good question. Um, uh, of course, uh, to deliver lectures, to work with students, to have these tutor relations with students is a form of my life for many years. And I like it greatly. I, uh, more than, uh, more than uh, 14 years, I was a professor in Russia Institute of uh, uh, Foreign Relations uh, and in the University of Foreign Relations and before it in some other universities. Uh, so when I was stopped, of course, it was very unpleasant thing and I was... Uh, under psychologi uh, psychological pressure uh, without these lectures. Uh, I uh, start to deliver lectures some uh, free, uh, free se in some free centers, but not for students, but for everybody. It's absolutely different thing. Uh, and now in Masaryk University, I return to my previous practice. And, uh, it was, it was only the first lecture. It's very difficult to say uh, what will be in future. But uh, <laughs> this is just as with language or with swimming. Um, you may not swim uh, for many years, but when you are in water, you start to swim since you know how to do it uh, in uh, previous decades. Uh, you may not speak language, uh, foreign language, for many years, but when you turn to find yourself in language atmosphere, you start to speak in one or two days. Uh, the same situation is with teaching. And I um, feel myself in my atmosphere here in the Masaryk University. Thank you. Another question? Hello, my name is Peter Horky from Respect Magazine. Uh, Mr. Zubov, I'd like to ask you uh, about uh, your decision to, to leave Russia. You said it was connected with the mobilization and that the mobilization has changed the atmosphere in the society and around you and it made you leave. So uh, uh, could you be more particular? How, uh, how did, what, what, what did actually change because of the mobilization for you and for your safety, for your ability to speak freely? Uh, can you maybe be more per more specific? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, you see, Mr. Putin told not once that there would be no mobilization in Russia and that Russia uh, would be successful in this military operation without any great efforts. But uh, in September, Everybody see, saw that it was a mistake, it was not maybe a lie. Uh, Mr. Putin really wanted to win without great effort, but uh, uh, he failed to do so. And uh, that's why the situation changed. Everybody in Russia felt that the war is not winning. Uh, that step by step Russia 
um, is losing its war. And that's why in aggression, in uh, mass media, in political circus, turn to be increased. And uh, since, if not, many people in Russia <clears throat> would start to speak that uh, Putin lost his war. That's why the um, level of authoritarian pressure increased greatly in September. And uh, after the 21st of September. And um, all of us feel this. Uh, for example, uh, after I have already left Russia, I uh, made calls to some of my friends, professors in different Moscow universities. And I saw with hesitation that he, they start to speak not in a manner of the previous years. They start to afraid to express openly their ideas, their attitudes, even in private talks. Uh, and I it recollect me the situation we in uh, the Soviet Union when I was young. At that time, we also were afraid to speak freely even by phone. Uh, that's why... Uh, and. Just in August, the situation was different. So really great shift toward authoritarian forms of consciousness. Uh, ex uh, uh, are in Russia now, um, emerged in Russia now. And it's very difficult in this situation even to continue my previous form of existence without university lectures, but with some private lectures. It was clear to me that just even my private lectures will be finished by force in the nearest future. Okay, thank you for your response. Another question, Mr. Flammer? from AFP, am I right? Thank you, yeah, absolutely, Thank thanks. Uh, Professor Zubov, uh, this year's Nobel Peace Prize went to rights organizations that are involved in the, in the war in Ukraine, in a way. Uh, to what extent do you think this will help the cause of Ukraine and the democratic world and whatever is left of uh, democratic Russia? Uh, this war, what it means, this war for democratic Russia, uh, <laughs> um, on the first glance, uh, of course, uh, we see that all democratic organizations were prohibited to be active in Russia and were absolutely closed. For example, Memorial. Our party, the People's Freedom Party, is not formally closed, but it's impossible to be active in Russia within our party or within each party which is opposition to Putin's regime. On the other hand, on the other hand, um, if Russia, uh, Putin, um, would be successful in Ukraine for democracy in Russia, um, will be very turned uh, very bad times uh, came uh, for democracy in russia in the future but since he's uh, he failed to win in ukraine we hope that uh, in maybe not in the short time but in the mid, mid, mid medium period of time uh, not Putin, but other representatives of um, Kremlin elite began to understand that it's necessary to uh, search for some uh, some uh, solving, uh, to, to search for solve uh, of this uh, war, uh, to stop this war, um, uh, to search for reconciliation. 
And um, in this way, I, we hope that uh, European world, NATO, Western world, uh, in its answer to this Russian elite, explain very clearly what ought to be done in Russia, not to see again Russia as aggressive and very dangerous for all the world country. And I hope that one of the necessary obligations for the future of these uh, uh, changes in Russia will be democratization of Russia. And that's why we have a hope for the future now even more strong than we had, for example, in the end of February and in the beginning of March this year. Okay, thank you. Another question? Question from Czech News Agency. Mr. Zbuf, I would like to ask you how long are you going to stay in Brno? Will you still be teaching in spring? And nobody maybe knows. What are your plans? Yes, nobody knows. Well, now I was invited for six lectures course, which uh, mm, which uh, is for uh, will finish in the end of November or in the beginning of December. Uh, and what will be after this? In this situation, political. Uh, educational really nobody knows and i don't know too what will be in future but i hope that if situation uh, changes into better and uh, political regime in russia to today's russia uh, is collapsed uh, it will be a possible possibility for me to return to russia and even it will be a necessity for me to return to russia uh, if not, we'll think about some different forms of my activity, of my schooling here in uh, Czech Republic or somewhere else in Europe, if it is not impossible in Czech Republic. But I like Czech Republic, I like Masaryk University, and my preferences is here. Okay. Please take the microphone from our assistant. Thank uh, you. Diana Mursevich, Mlada Fronta. I wanted to ask you, you told that uh, your journey from uh, Moscow to Brno was adventurous. Can you elaborate on that? How exactly was it adventurous? Uh, it was <laughs> adventurous. It was maybe not dangerous, but it was adventurous since it was very long by car. Uh, with some, I ought to stop from time to time to give a rest to a driver, and the driver was my son. Uh, and we had, uh, there were four of us in the car. My, my wife, my son is a driver, me and the cat. And the cat may be the main uh, beneficiary of this living, since now he may, by in his cat's life, also breathe free air of Europe. <laughs> okay, thank you. And another question? Uh, again, Petr Horky, respect. respect. Um, Mr. Zubov, you said that uh, in those six lectures that you will give here in Brno, you will try to answer the question if uh, Russia is uh, indeed, if in Russia is ingrained some kind of genotype that only allows totalitarian and absolute, uh, absolutist regimes, or if today's Russia is a result of some previous mistakes by politicians that were serving before the current one. I know that six lectures is a long time and it's impossible to distill that answer into one, one answer at a press conference, but could you please try to give your brief, simplified answer to that? I have already told that I have no absolute answer just now. And the, the only thing, where, uh, two things I may recommend you. First one, I just before leaving Moscow on the 20th of September, 
I um, made uh, publicly my last lecture. Uh, um, is there a way out from Russian way? And this lecture is uh, now published in internet, and I hope in some days it will be written. Uh, worse, uh, version of this lecture. Uh, another, uh, another my supposition to you is to go to these lectures in Masaryk University, and you can step by step uh, uh, with me, in collaboration with me, see and f uh, find uh, the answer to this question, which is so interesting to you, and not only maybe to you. OK, thank you. And does anyone have any questions? Okay, check TV, please, Mr. Svatoy. Uh, Mr. Zubov, I would ask if uh, there are still people in Russia who can actively oppose the regime because uh, uh, it's not only about like uh, it's not only possibility to uh, leave the country, but uh, there's still some uh, opposition in Russia. So, in your opinion, how active it? this and it can be, and what are the possibilities for change uh, of the regime in Russia? It's a very good and rather serious question. Um, in the, as to me, maybe I'm mistaken, but as to me, uh, now uh, the maybe only possibility uh, to change regime in Russia is the shift in Russian elites after the defeat of uh, this war which Putin started in Ukraine. I see no possibilities in mass <clears throat> uh, political movement in today's Russia. Since the majority of Russian people are not ready to be politically active against the regime. Maybe the majority even not against the regime at all, but for the regime uh, because of very active propaganda, which now uh, takes part in Russia. Uh, but nobody knows eg exactly uh, uh, for sure this situation since all sociological investigations are not very valid in today's Russia, uh, since it's uh, rather stupid to think that people will answer questions openly in this situation. For example, if you ask somebody, do you believe or do you support Mr. Putin? Uh, the majority of people prefer not to answer positively. Uh, and not to answer negatively, but they prefer to say, I don't know. Or maybe they prefer to say yes, but uh, in heart they are very, they, they are ready to say no. Imagine, for example, in the Nazi Germany in uh, 1943, some Swedish uh, journalist or Swedish sociologist uh, we, um, uh, asked uh, somebody on the street of Berlin or Munich if you support Hitler or not. I suppose person prefer not to give frankly answer. The same situation is in Russia. Okay, another question, Daniela Krasenska, I think. Daniela Krasenska, Seznam Spravy. You said that you wanted to come back to Russia one day. Uh, what do you think would be the moment when you'd consider turning back home? Uh, would be just the collapse of Putin's regime or would you consider other options of returning? Thank you. This is also a very good and serious question. Um, I think that the end of war in Ukraine and the uh, start of negotiations with Europe and Ukraine on the uh, field of uh, improving relations is, uh, I mean, start of negotiations from Russia, by Russia. Uh, and of course, the uh, disappearance of Mr. Putin and his close circle, 
as uh, to say Mr. Patrushev, uh, Mr. Bortnikov and our other KGB generals, disappearance of these people from the ruling group of uh, Russia is uh, necessary, a necessary principle after which it will be good for me to return to Russia. But before this, it is un practically unwise to return. Okay. As the time for the press conference draws to a close, I would like to ask you for just final question, if you have. Or does the director wants to add something of Masaryk University, Martin Baresh? Yes, uh, I would like to add uh, maybe at the end, at the very end of this press conference, that I would like also to use the chance that we are uh, here together uh, and to pass my um, thanks and gratitude to the Czech government. Uh, because uh, our prime minister together with the Polish prime minister were the first ones who visited in the very early days Ukraine. And also the Czech government uh, was expressing clearly clear message that evil is evil. And it is very important for us and not only for, for the citizens of the Czech Republic, for, but for the Europeans and all the, um, all the citizens who are uh, pro-democratic. And I know, and we all know that the situation is not, uh, is not so, uh, so easy nowadays, together with the energetic crisis and so on. But during the Czech presidency, we are seeing the clear steps how to also um, mm, what could the middle-sized country like Czech Republic do for the international democratization and cooperation? So I would like to thank you, Mikulash, and your colleagues for this, because it's very important also for our new generation of students. Uh, when Mikulaj was uh, remembering that academic senate or mentioning that academic senate is here, this is very democratic, you know, advantage of all the systems who are, uh, which are democratic, that you elect the director, you elect your government, you elect your mayor and so on. And this is not taken for granted. We were used to it like it's like something automatic, but it's not. So this is what I would like to address and again, uh, Thank you that uh, Mr. Zubov, Professor Zubov could be with us and I hope that I will also visit one of the, your lectures uh, in person. Of course, I will see it uh, on, online, but uh, I think that it will, uh, your stay here will, uh, will be uh, very fruitful for all, uh, for all of you. So just small remark. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Our, the last one. Uh, maybe, maybe this question is for Director Mr. Baresh. Uh, when will actually the first lecture take place and uh, will it be open to public? Yes, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the first lecture was addressed last week. On Wednesday. Uh, on Wednesday and it's uh, open for public via stream. You know, and I think that uh, it it could be fine. Uh, it could be found uh, find uh, on the internet where it is and so on. And it it will continue like this. And I would like also to thank all your all my colleagues who are taking care of the lectures. Faculty of Arts, our one of the four founding faculties of our Masaryk University, where those lectures are developed uh, delivered. And to my colleagues, Jiri Hanush, Vice Rector for uh, Personal Academic Affairs, to Marian Kish, uh, and, so, and Radim Saibot, and a lot of other people who are taking care of all this very, uh, very interesting and very important um, stay and lecturing of Professor Zubov at Masaryk University. So, lecture was given last week, first one, and it's open for public via internet. Thank you. Yeah, and you can find it on the Faculty of Arts YouTube channel, yeah?
Fine. So our press conference is over. Thank you for your coming. Thank you for your interest. Please keep us in favor and see you again sometimes during other media activities of Masaryk University. Thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye. I want to express once again a great uh, gratitude to uh, my colleagues in Masaryk University for such a warm atmosphere I feel immediately when I uh, occurred myself here. Thank you.